Hey everyone, it has been a hell of a long time since I made one of these. This is Danny again. Um, it's probably been about a year and a half since I made an instruction video, and the last one I made was the 4x4. I promised you guys a 5x5, and I finally decided to make good on that promise. So these, this series of videos is going to show you how to solve this cube. This is a, v, a V-cube 5x5 that I got at the beginning of summer of 2008. And so by now it's pretty smooth. I like it a lot. Um, it takes me about three minutes and six seconds to solve the cube. That's my best uh, using the method that I'm going to show you. So it, it's possible to get decent. That's not an amazing time, but it's good for what I want to do. All right. So I guess let's get started. Uh, while I'm mixing it up, I'd like to give a shout out to Raisha because she asked me to. Now, the 5x5 five five is obviously an odd number cube. It has an odd number of layers, 5. That means it's similar more to the 3x3 three three because it does have a set centerpiece for each face. So unlike the 4x4 four four where you have to constantly keep in mind where, what colors go where in relation to each other, all you have to do to find out what color goes on what face is look at the centerpiece. So this side must be black, this side must be orange, and this side must be green, for example. Um, One cool thing about the 5x5 five five is that there are tons of ways to solve it. Um, it's a lot more intuitive, in my opinion, than the 3x3 three three where you're following a lot of set instructions and algorithms. The 5x5 five five takes a lot more free thinking. Um, I find it to be more fun, personally. So, I guess let's get started. The first thing we're going to do, it's, so, it's solved similarly to the 4x4 four four, in that first you solve the centers, then the edges, then you put it together like a 3x3. Three uh, the centers, in this case, are the 3x3 three three box in the center of each face. So this, the very center piece and all the surrounding pieces. Right? Um, and the same on this side, same on all the sides. Okay, The edges consist of these rows of three that are along the outer perimeter and not including the corners. So these three are an edge, these three are an edge, and so on. Um, and then you would put it together as if it were a 3x3 three three at the end. So first, we're going to solve the centers. And I guess you can pick any color to start. The way I like to solve my centers is what I do is I build rows of three. So let's say, let's pick green, for instance. All right. So what I like to do is build rows of three. So I'll put a row of three green here, a row of three green here, and a row of three green here. That kind of breaks it down so that you can solve all nine pieces in sets of three instead of one at a time, which can be tedious and it's a little more difficult, I think, sometimes. So, the first one is pretty easy because you have all six free, spa free sides to work on. You don't have to worry about messing anything up. So, if you have any experience with a Rubik's Cube, you should be able to at least be able to build a row of three, something like this, right? So then what I would do is I would bring it up, without worrying about anything else, up to the green center. Right, so now we have these three and the green center right here, not worrying about anything else yet. Then I like to work on the other side. I leave the middle row for last usually. And so you can do any moves you like as long as you don't do moves that disturb the top side. And if you do, there's ways to fix it. So here's a green, here's a green, so I'll connect those in a partial line so far and now I need one here and there's one that's part of that that can go in that spot so I'll turn it over twice and put it in right next to it so there we have a row of three and then I will put it up in this spot next to the other row of three that we had okay and now here we have the last row of three that we're going to do. One of them is already there. The centerpiece obviously has to be there. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect this one piece from the top so I can show you how to work it if it were not there, in mo like it would be in most cases. So I'll just bring it down, move it out of the way, and bring the centerpiece back up. Okay, so now what I usually do is here's the, here's the two pieces that we're working with right here. What the goal is is to get them to look like this, where instead of being diagonal to each other, they're right across the center to each other. Like that. 
and it's pretty easy to do. There's no way to explain it really. It's all totally based on how they were arranged to begin with, and it's, it's very easy. Um, play around with it for a couple minutes, and it should become cake after a while. Uh, and so what I do to get those two up into those two spots is don't hold it this way as you would think. But what I do is I hold it so that these two are the two empty spots are in perpendic or perpendicular to where they where these things need to go. So I'll turn them like this. That way, now we're going to take these two, put them up, right? And then that knocked out a row of three green back here. So all we need to do is turn the top sideways to bring that row of three back. And there we have our green center done. So once you have the first center done, uh, that's the easiest one because you don't have to worry about screwing up anything on any other face. I usually flip the cube over 180 and I work on the side that would be opposite. So opposite from green is going to be blue. So now we're going to do the same kind of system with the blue centers. So what I'm going to do is build rows of three again using the four side faces. Try not to do up and down moves or else that will disturb the greens you have down here. You can do any kind of outer layer moves you want. You can do up and down outer layer moves because that will not disturb the greens as you can see. Um, so you can do any horizontal moves you want and any outer layer up and down moves you want. So I'll do that. I'll, I want this one here so I can have a row of three, green, three blue. So I'll bring it over here, turn this face, and bring it back. So now we have a row of three. Um, now here's the difference with uh, with the first face. What we want to do, we bring these three up to the blue. So we're going to do that. But that brought these three greens up, so now that's gone. So what we need to do is spin the blue side around. Here's the three we just brought up. We want to spin those around to the opposite side. So that those are safe when we bring the three greens back down. See? So there's our first row of blue. Now we'll do the same. Make another three. Make another row of three blue. So this one will connect to here. Tab two, and then here's the other corner piece. So bring it around to here. Turn the outer layer to change position, so that we can bring it back. Okay. These kinds of moves are very intuitive. There's no set way to do it. Again, it's all based on how they were arranged to begin with. And as long as you don't do anything to mess up the green then you should be fine. So now, so take these three blues and connect them up to the top. We're not going to put them into the empty spot because then when we spin them around to the other side to make them safe, to bring the greens back down, all we do is bring the other three blues back down. So that did absolutely nothing. It's exactly the same as it was before. So what we're going to do is instead of bringing these three blues up to the empty space, we're going to put them into the space that the first three blues are at. So watch what happens. We bring them up. So that knocked out the three blues that were here to back here. All right. So now what we're going to do is the same. Bring these three back to the, around to the other side so we can fix the green. And when we fix the green, it also brings the original other three blues back to the top. So there we go. Now we have two rows of blue. And we still have the green side totally completed. Well, the green centers. And so now what we're going to do is take the last two blue pieces, here's one, and there's one, and we're going to connect them across the center like we did before, and take the two empty spots, turn them to be perpendicular, they're facing this way, this is facing upwards, to the spots where they have to, where these have to go, put it up, turn so that we can bring the other two, other three blues back and that will also fix the greens that we just did. So there we go, those are the first two centers. We have the 3x3 square of blue in the middle and we also have the 3x3 square of green.